Hello, hello everyone, my name is Alex Martinez and in today's video we are going to learn how to develop some async APIs using Endpoint Code Builder. Let's get started. So in a previous video we had already implemented our email and account services. If we take a look at the account service, we can see here in the summary that we created one API channel with the user sign up channel in the subscribe operation. We are using the subscribe operation even though we are publishing the user signed up event when a new user account is created because that is the way that we should be designing our APIs in order to be able to implement them later. If you need a little bit of more detail as to why we chose to do it this way, please go to the previous video or the previous article where we took a look at how to design these specifications. And if we take a look at the email service and we go here to the summary, we will also be able to see that we have the same user sign up channel because we are going to be using the same queue, but now we are using the publish operation. All right, so I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on how we implemented this because you can go to the previous video, but in summary, we have these two specifications. So every time that there is a new account, the account service will pick it up and then will publish in the queue the information for the new account, which the email service will, will then pick up and send the email to the appropriate account. Before we start with the implementation, let's make sure that we have everything that we need from Anypoint MQ. Just so you know, you do need to have an enterprise Anypoint platform account in order to create Anypoint MQ queues. So once you have that, head here and go to MQ. Now, the first thing that you can do here is to copy this. Make sure you select the connector version 4.x and later. And this will be the URL that you can use for your queues. So make sure you keep that somewhere safe. Now we are going to create our first queue. So if we click here on this button and select queue, now let's add the user sign up queue, which is the message that we created in our both specifications. You can leave all of the defaults and click on create queue. After that, go here to client apps and click on the plus button again. This will ask you for a name. You can just select something like async API. It can be any name that you want. Select save changes. And now you will be able to retrieve your client app ID and your client secret. So simply click on this copy button to the right and make sure you are saving this somewhere safe. All right, that is all for MQ. Once you have this information, you will be able to use it in our implementations. So now let's head to our Anypoint Code Builder, click on Implement an API. By this point, you will be asked to log in to your Anypoint Platform account. Once you get the message box to log in, make sure you go through all the prompts. I am already logged in, so that's why I'm not seeing it. And another thing before you start, make sure that you have your async APIs enabled. If you don't have them, you won't be able to see this checkbox right here. You can enable that in any point platform by going to Code Builder and selecting the Enable button from right here. I already have it enabled, so that's why I see a green checkbox. So once you select Async APIs from here, you will be able to see the Async APIs that you have. In my case, I'm going to select the Account Service, Add Assets, and now that you have everything set up, you can just click, click on Create Project. All right, once the project has been created, head here to global configs. You can close this. And if you take a look at the Anypoint MQ connection, you will be able to see that the client ID and the client secret already have properties. If you added your URL to your specification, then you will be able to see your URL here. In my case, I didn't add it. So I am going to place here a property. So now I have to go I'm going to save this and then after all of this, I am going to add an HTTP listener configuration because I am going to set this up later. All right, that is all that I need from this file. I can close this. And now if I go here to resources to my dev properties, I just need to make sure that I add the property in here because I am going to be putting my URL along with my client app ID and my client secret. So go ahead and add the values right here. 
All right, I added my properties for security reasons. I'm not gonna be able to show them to you. But after that, let's get to the flows.xml. If you don't see the graphical view, just click on this button right here. You will be able to see it. So first we're going to build a flow. Once we have the flow name, let's add the listener right here from HTTP. Now, if we click on that, select the configuration that we created and the path in my case is going to be publish. After that, let me make this smaller. Just click here. And if you head to connectors, API kit for async API, you will be able to see this publish connector. So click on that. And now let's set it up really quickly. Choose a connector configuration. We already have the async API config. It might take a little bit to load, but once it has loaded, you will be able to select the channel name and we already have the user sign up from our specification. And then in server name, we already have our endpoint MQ also from our specification. All right, and that's it for this API. Just click on save and then let's deploy this. So this is the configuration that I want. Click on deploy and I'm gonna select sandbox as my environment and that's it, the deployment has started. If you had to run to a manager, you will see that this is deploying. Just make sure that you copy this link right here. While that happens, let's go ahead and implement our other API. So click on implement an API. My project name will be email app. And if I filter again by async APIs, I will be able to see my email service at asset. And that is it. Let's create this project. Now, similarly to what we did before, let's go ahead and replace the URL with a property. In this case, we don't need to create an HTTP listener because this will have a subscribe to the queue, but you do have to get to the properties and make sure that you have the URL property here. Again, fill out these three properties and now you can head to the flows configuration file once again. So now, as you can see from here, we already have a flow. We already have a message listener. If we take a look at this, you will be able to see that we already have the async API configuration with the channel name and the servers. So you don't need to do anything here. We also have a logger. And if we were to follow the use case here, we would be adding a send email. And we would have to set this up so we could send the email to the address that we get from the message. However, to keep things simple, we are not going to be sending that, but we are going to leave the logger here so we can see the message payload in the logs. All right, that is all. Now let's deploy this one more time. Make sure that all of these settings look good and click on deploy. Select the sandbox environment. Once both applications have been deployed, you can head to your preferred REST client. It can be Postman, Thunder Client, or Curl. Make sure you are using the account app URL that you got from Cloud Hub earlier, and make sure that you add the slash publish that we created for the HTTP listener. This is the JSON content that we will be sending in the body of the request. It has a first name, last name, email, and created at just as we had in our async API specification. So we're going to send this to the account app and then we will be able to see the logs from the email app. So if we come here and check the logs, we are able to see correctly that we have the JSON payload that was taken from the queue and processed from the email app with this logger. If we had put the send email connector in our email app, then we will be able to receive the actual email. But in this case, just for demonstration purposes, we are able to see that the information has been processed correctly in the log. All right, that is all for this video. Congratulations on developing your very first async API implementations using the API kit for async API in Anypoint Code Builder. Stay tuned for more Async API and Anypoint Code Builder content. See you on the next video. Bye.